Uh, I'm also presenting on the behalf of um, um, Philip Reutemann. All of these people are my supervisors, so I'm attached to the Discovery Circle Lab. Uh, David Bruce is from the School of Natural and Built Environments, University of South Australia, and John Bolan is uh, my stat supervisor from the Centre for uh, Applied Mathematics. Um, this, is, this project is about trying to predict the impact of, of urbanisation on biodiversity. Um, you've probably heard things like, at the moment, about half the world is urbanised, and by 2050 that's expected to be about two-thirds. Australia is about 90% urbanised, so we're pretty much all there, but we're still managing to pack quite a few more people in, and that's exactly the case with the Greater Adelaide region as well. This sort of project is almost impossible to do without using citizen science, and hopefully that will become obvious as I, as I go through that. I start off with this slide. I call this a, an eye, eyes wide shut moment. Uh, apart from it being a movie, someone told me once I'd actually seen it 19 times, which I think is an heroic effort. Um, but it's one of those things that happens where things happen in your life and you're kind of aware of them, but you don't really take too much notice. So, for example, the house down the bottom of the street, it's been knocked over and there have been two, two houses built in its way. Or that place that you see on the way to work each time, that's disappeared and something's happened. And one of the things in particular um, in our urban regions, uh, the Australian backyard is disappearing, and it's disappearing quite rapidly. Now, uh, you have to bear with me. I may end up pushing the wrong button, so I apologise in advance for that. Right, I'll see how I go. Uh, so this has also been supported by um, a couple of governments, Marion and Salisbury. They're laid in Mount Lofty Range as Natural Resource Management Board and uh, uh, Duna and the University of South uh, as um, South Australia as well. The project's called Birding the Birds, for want of a better term, and I blame Philip for that, that title. I had something far more uh, less adaptable. So what's the problem with um, urbanisation and biodiversity? Well, mostly, rapidly increasing urbanisation has quite a negative impact on biodiversity. And we've got an extremely rapidly urbanising world. Most people think that biodiversity is good, and most people respond positively to biodiversity. So the key here is that in a place like Adelaide, we have to accept we're going to probably have another half a million people over the next 30 years. So where do we put them? So, and where can we put those people without ad adversely affecting biodiversity? Some people call it conserving biodiversity. But I actually happen to think we can achieve both aims in a win-win situation. We can both put more people in, but we should, if we're smart enough, actually be able to improve the biodiversity around these urban areas as well. But you have to start off with what's the real relationship, though, between urbanisation and biodiversity? It's really hard to work that out. Um, on the right, that's just an image of a um, housing tower, I think, in Hong Kong. Uh, which I think gets direct sunlight when there's not cloud for a very short part of the day. We haven't um, suffered uh, high population densities like that in Australia yet that I know of, and certainly not in Adelaide, but um, this is how some people have to, to deal with that. The approach so far has been, and it's couched in these terms, land sharing versus land sparing. So land sharing is when you, if you look on the left, you have this typical thing where we have fairly large blocks of land. We have houses, we have big backyards and some local parks. So the land's being shared between built infrastructure and also green stuff. Um, some people suggested, and some regions suggested, well, we actually, sorry, we actually need to change that because the land sharing is about what urban sprawl used to be about. Maybe we'd be better off by actually concentrating our increasing population into an area, so we have extremely um, uh, dense um, population densities, but we leave bigger green spaces, as you see in that as well. And most of the work so far has suggested that a land sparing approach is probably a better way of going. But I'm finding it's not as simple as that. And one of the problems with the land sparing approach is that if you don't get it right, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that people will actually miss out or can't engage in um, the use of green space. 
and miss out on some of the biodiversity around them. Also, it seems to not be so good for things like beetles and um, possibly butterflies as well, but it's still early days. So I'm looking at the Greater Adelaide region as a case study. So that on the right-hand side, you can see the boundary there. It's about 9,000 square kilometres. It's about 135 um, kilometres from the bottom up to the top, and for some reason, the state government pushed it two or three nautical miles out to, to see as well. They haven't been that many houses built out there just yet, but who knows in the future. Um, it's about almost one and a half million people in Adelaide, which covers about 84% of the state's population. So we are a very urbanised um, state here. Covers a diverse range of um, land types and land cover. And over the next 30 years, now these figures have been revised just recently, but not all by that much. The government wants to be able to pack at least another half a million people in. They'll need probably an extra 250,000 extra dwellings. They hope to be able to do 76% uh, of that by urban infill, and the rest will come from traditional urban sprawl, particularly in agriculture areas. Most of that 15,000 hectares of new land is actually going to be agricultural land that will succumb um, to urbanisation. Oh, how is the government going to achieve this? Well, it has three strategies. Strategy one and two is classic urban infill, but with a slightly different approach in the areas you see that have got the red around them. That's a big bulk. And the third strategy is lots of these other little red blotches. They almost look like um, pimples or something, don't they, on the map. Those are existing townships. So the government's idea is, well, we're going to put more people in the towns themselves, but we'll sneak a bit of land from around the towns as well. And that's going to um, account for um, sort of the other less than 30% uh, that's going into there. So that's the third strategy. This is um, strategy number one. Uh, some of you should still be able to recognise this. This is a classic backyard. Uh, if you look here, this is very much... a a thing that's dying off because the strategy here is that's a waste. We can knock over the house that's on there and we put another two or three in its place. Unfortunately, the backyard has to go. And that's a bit of a pity because in a traditional, a classic backyard, you have something like this. So maybe most of these are exotic species, but the reality is you've got at least seven different layers of vegetation structure and vegetation structure seems to be the really important thing from a biodiversity point of view. So um, these are actually going, and that's most of what's going to happen in Adelaide, and I'm sure it's exactly the same in other cities as well. But this, we're actually trying to look at a regional area. It's more than just the, um, the small part of the city to do this, and that's actually the first time a, a regional area has actually been looked at. Uh, it, it does take quite a bit of work, which is why we need citizen scientists. The, uh, you know, people blame the fact that the uh, backyard is disappearing for the Australian cricket team for doing so badly and a whole range of other ills. Barbecues are changing as well. No one near as many burnt sausages. There's a whole range of things. This is strategy number two. This is the humble little house. No more exists. It's that way, probably about a 15 minute drive. So strategy number two is if you have a traditional house on a traditional block that actually had quite a large um, backyard, if you live within about 800 metres of a transport corridor, trams or trains, um, then you get special treatment. So in this house is now gone and they haven't started building this yet, it's going to be replaced by two uh, lots of apartments that are three storeys high. So the government's looking at really packing people in around transport corridors um, with um, apartment blocks that are somewhere between three and six stories high.